Hey guys, so today we are going to continue looking at verbs and we are going to be looking at helping verbs. So we've learned that verbs are the action in a sentence and um, we're going to be looking at something called helping verbs. And we're going to talk about that in just a second, but our objective for today is I can use helping verbs correctly for subject verb agreement, and I can use helping verbs correctly in speaking and writing. So we're going to be um, identifying helping verbs and and then also picking the correct one so that um, it works for your writing. So first thing I have for us is to watch a short video on helping verbs just so that we understand what a helping verb is. So, helping verbs. What's up with helping verbs? What are helping verbs and how do we use them? You might have found this to be true in your own life, but sometimes you can't do things alone. Sometimes you need a buddy, you need a helper, you need a friend that can help you accomplish things. We work better together, don't we? Sure, sometimes we don't get along and sometimes we don't work well together, but still, we need helpers. And, you know, we could be there for each other. We don't just do things alone by ourselves. You don't say much, do you, Bob? Hey, did you know verbs can be like that too? Yeah, pretty weird, huh? You see, sometimes a verb can express an action or a state all by itself. Yay! All by itself. Here's the certificate. Yay! Good job, me. Pat on my back. You know, sometimes you can do something by yourself, and sometimes a verb can do something all by itself. And that's fun. That's good. But that's not always the case. Now and then, verbs need a buddy that helps them express an action or a state, okay? They need a buddy, they need a helper, and we call those helping verbs. We're gonna learn what those are and how we use those in sentences, but what's important for you to get right now is that helping verbs help a main verb express an action or a state. They are literally helpers, they're buddies, and that's why we call them helping verbs. Okay, let's give you an example. Here is a picture of a park. And let's say this is our sentence. The park has opened. The park has opened. Now we know that opened is the main verb because it tells us the action that's happening with the park. But notice there's another verb there that comes just before it that helps it state the action. The park has opened. The word has is the helping verb. The word has, the helping verb, is helping open, which is the main verb, express the action. All right, now we're going to share an interesting fact with you. The helping verb is always just before the main verb. So it's really easy to spot which verb is the helping verb. It always comes before. Let's look at our example again. The park has opened. Remember, has is the helping verb, and it's just before open, which is the main verb. The helping verb comes first and helps out the main verb. So it's helping verb and then the main verb. Really easy. Here's another example. Here's a picture of a man playing soccer. And let's say this is our sentence. He will kick the ball. He will kick the ball. Well, we know that kick is the main verb because kick expresses the action. He will kick the ball. But notice there's another verb just before the word kick that helps it state the action. What's that word? Yeah, will. Will is the helping verb. Will helps the word kick express the action. And notice again, the helping verb always comes before the main verb. 
Let's try this one. Here's a picture of a woman and a girl laughing. Let's say this is our sentence. They are laughing. They are laughing. Now we know that the word laughing is the main verb because that's what's expressing the action. They are laughing. But notice there's another verb just before the word laughing that helps express that action. That's helping the word laughing. What is that word? What's that helping verb? Yeah, the word are. Are is the helping verb because are helps the word laughing express the action. Are is the helping verb. All right, let's try this one. The seagull is flying. Look at this picture of the seagull. The seagull is flying. Okay, you tell us what is the main verb? Which word is the main verb? Yeah, flying. Flying is the main verb because it tells us the action. But notice there's another verb just before it that helps it state the action. What's the helping verb in this sentence? Yeah, the word is. Is is the helping verb because the word is helps the word flying express the action. Is is the helping verb. <laughs> You're getting the hang of this. Here's the last example. I am driving. I am driving. Okay, so what's the main verb? Uh-huh, driving. Yeah, driving is the main verb because it tells us the action. But notice, just like the other ones, there's another verb that's helping out. What's the helping verb? Uh-huh, the word am. Yeah, the word am is the helping verb. Great job. And notice again, the helping verb always comes before the main verb. To review, helping verbs help a main verb express an action or a state. Oh, and don't forget, the helping verb is always just before the main verb, so they're always easy to spot. Okay, Bob, that's what helping verbs are. Oh my goodness, they're like the buddies of main verbs. Helping verbs, we use them all the time. They're exciting, they're fun, they're easy to spot. You're still not saying anything, are you, Bob? Nothing, you're just not... You just don't like to talk. That's okay. Because you know what? We still had fun learning. All right. So we're going to take what we just learned about helping verbs in the video and see if we can find some um, helping verbs in our sentences. So just to review, helping verbs work with the main verb to show time. Singular and plural subjects use different helping verbs. So this isn't in the um, video, but we're going to be looking at whether the nouns are singular or plural, meaning one or more than one. So whenever we use singular nouns and the pronouns he, she, and it, we use the helping verb is, was, or has. So he is, she was, it has. Um, it has been a long time since we saw each other. So the main verb is been, and our helping verb is has. Has been is the two verbs that are put together. The girl was talking to her friend on the phone. So the main verb is talking. This is a singular pronoun, the girl. So we're going to use the helping verb was. The girl was talking to her friend on the phone. 
Okay, now looking at helping verbs. Helping verbs work with the main verb to show time. Singular and plural subjects use different helping verbs. So we just talked about singular. We're going to look at plural nouns. And the plural, plural, plural nouns and the pronouns, you, we, and they. They use helping verbs are, have, and were. So we could say you are, we have, they were. So one example of a sentence is they are slowing down now. So my main verb is slowing and the helping verb right before it is are. We use are because plural or they is plural. The snowflakes were falling fast. So the main verb is falling. Snowflakes is the noun and we are looking at this is a plural because it has the S. So we're going to use one of our plural helping um, verbs. We're going to use were. The snowflakes were falling fast. All right, helping verbs help with us, help us to show time. Remember, singular and plural nouns have different helping verbs. Here's one that is another kind of exception. With the pronoun I, we use the helping verb am, was, and have. So we might say, I was scared of it last year. This is in the past, we say was. I am going to a haunted house next week. This is the future. So we are going to use am. My main verb is going. We're going to add am because the pronoun is I. All right, let's try some together. Choose the correct helping verb in the parentheses. I has or I have loved books about dragons for years. Remember, my plur or my noun pronoun is I. Loved is the noun. When we look at our helping verbs for I, I'm going to use am, was, have. I have loved books about dragons for years. You should have picked have. Number two, my friend Maya has or have read lots of dragon books too. So we are talking about the noun Maya. It is one person. And we're looking, what is the word that's going to help read? You should have said have. My friend Maya, no, I'm sorry. You should have said has. My friend Maya has read lots of dragon books too. My friend Maya has read lots of dragon books too. Number three, she is or she are writing her own book about dragons now. You should have said is. So my pronoun is she, that's the subject. Writing is the main verb. We're going to look at the helping word, helping verb is. So she, because she is singular, we're going to use the helping verb is. She is writing her own book about dragons now. Number four, we has or we have been working on the illustrations together. You should have said have. We have been working on the illustrations together. So we're looking at this been working and our pronoun is we or the subject is we. And because it is we, we have to use the helping verb have. We have been working on illustrations together. Number five, our hands was or were hurting from drawing for so long. So we're looking at hands being the subject and hurting is the main noun verb. So we're going to go with were because it is plural. Our hands were hurting from drawing for so long. All right, let's look at our jump rope contest article, short paragraph. When the weather is nice, my sister and I like to play outdoor games and run races. I win some of the races, but my sister always beats me at jump rope. 
In the past, I was never good with a jump rope. My feet kept getting caught on the rope, but I has wanted to win a jump rope contest for a long time. So I decided to practice every day. Yesterday, my sister and I decided to have a jump rope contest. We are jumping as fast as I, as we could. My practice really paid off because my sister could not keep up with me. So we are looking for the change that should be made to sentence number five. But I has wanted to win a jump rope contest for a long time. Are we going to change has to am? B, change has to was. C, change has to had, or D, no change is needed. You should have said C, change has to had. So we're looking right here, but I has does not work. We're gonna say, but I had wanted to win a jump rope contest for a long time. My pronoun I is one of those special ones, and my verb, my main verb is wanted. We're going to add had. I had wanted to win a jump rope contest for a long time. All right, so just so we can review. Helping verbs work with the main verb to help show time. We're gonna be looking at the past, present, and future. Singular and plural subjects use different helping verbs. If we are using a helping verb, the helping verb we use with a singular noun or the pronouns he, she, and it are going to be is, was, and has. If we are looking at plural pro pronouns, plural nouns and pronouns, you, we, and they, we are gonna use the helping verbs are, have, and were. When we are using the pronoun I, talking about ourselves, we are gonna use the helping verb am, was, and have.